Okay, this is a cool graph that shows you how waves grow in amplitude or don't grow as they travel from deep water to shallow water, or shallower water. And it's a little bit strange, it's a little bit counterintuitive, so I'm going to walk you through it here. Okay, so um, the way I think it's helpful to think, think about this diagram is that, first of all, it's confusing because the wave is moving from right to left. Okay, so the wave is moving right to left. Um, off to the right here, think about your wave in deep water. And in deep water, it's going to have a wave height of h naught prime. That's just the notation of the diagram. And it's going to have a deep water wavelength of l naught, uh, which is gt squared over 2 pi. Um, and that is simply the deep water wavelength for a wave that has a period t. If Regardless of where the wave is, if it's a deep water wave, that's the wavelength that it'll have in deep water if it has a period t. Okay, so now what we're doing is, as we move from left to right on this diagram, we are looking at different values of d over l. So we know d over l is the opposite of l over d. Um, and we can kind of write in on this diagram where different classifications fall. So we know for deep water waves, we have a cutoff of l over d um, needs to be less than 2 or d over l greater than a half, okay? So that is going to be uh, to the right of this line I just drew in, so I'll just write deep here. Similarly, this is going to be intermediate here, um, to the right of, to the left of it, sorry. And then our cutoff of l over d needing to be greater than 20, if we flip that, that's d over l um, less than 1 over 20, which is 0 0.05, so that's actually um, just this portion of the graph here. This would be shallow water waves or long waves, okay? Okay, and so the way to think about this graph is as the wave is approaching the coastline from deep water, um, it is following along this graph, okay? So at some point it gets to a d over l value that's below 0.7, and the wave height, which we're tracking here, it, this is the wave height relative to that offshore wave height h naught prime. Okay, so notice in deep water this is pegged at one. That's the value of this notch here. As it transitions from deep water to intermediate water, you actually notice that the wave height dips, and that is really counterintuitive, but it's actually a real bit of physics. Namely, that when the wave transitions from deep water to intermediate wa water, provided it's approaching a a straight and parallel uh, coastline and it's approaching at a 90 degree angle, the wave height will actually decrease slightly. And I know on this graph it looks like it's maybe a 50% decrease until you notice that this notch here over on the lower left is actually 0.8, it's not zero. So the minimum here, I can't remember the exact number, it's somewhere maybe around 0.93 or so. So it loses about 7% of its wave height. But then once it gets to be almost a shallow water wave, and you notice that it's not quite exactly when it becomes shallow, it's you know more like L over D of about uh, of 10. So this would be L over D of about 10. Once it goes beyond that in terms of getting shallower and longer, um, that's when you really start to see this dramatic wave growth. Okay, and it's not that dramatic. I mean, this this multiplier here is 1.6 times the offshore wave height. Um, but that's basically how you would use this, or interpret this graph. Now the way to use it um, is to actually kind of start with your deep water parameters out here, calculate your deep water wavelength, and then you figure out, uh, you know, then you want to figure out the wave height at some location closer to the shore. And closer to the shore is going to have a, a different value of d over L0. The numbers in parentheses here are values of d over l0, not d over l. These ones are d over l, and these ones are d over l0, okay? So if you say I'm going to go from deep water, and then I want to know my wave, what its, what its wave height is in 5 meters, you would take 5 for that value of d, you would divide by the offshore wave height, so it's a little bit confusing because you're taking the onshore water depth divided by the deep water wave wavelength, sorry, and that would put you somewhere along the x-axis. You would walk your way up to this graph, and then you would go over here and read the multiplier, 
and then you would just multiply through by the denominator, which is your deep water wave height, okay? So I think I'm gonna just show a quick example here of how that would work out. Um, how do we do that? We go here. Um, so we have an example. Let's say we have a, a four second period wave, four seconds. Offshore, so I'm gonna go ahead and write that as the variable that we're gonna be calling it, H naught prime. So this is in uh, deep water. Um, the wave height is 1.5 meters, okay? So these are in deep water. We don't know how deep, but we're just told it's deep water. And then the question is, for a depth of, um, what are we gonna do here? Two meters, um, what is the wave height? And that's really all we're given, okay? And, that, and actually this graph is enough to solve the problem, okay? So the way you wanna solve this is to calculate a value of D over L0. So we'll start by calculating our deep water wavelength. If you plug in uh, GT squared over two pi, um, you get a value that is about 25 meters, okay? So a four second wave in, in the middle of the ocean, you know, a mile deep is gonna have a wavelength of 25 meters. If it's 200 meters deep, it's probably still gonna have that same wavelength of 25 meters. Um, this is our onshore location down here. So we, we, we calculate this ratio, two meters is the onshore depth. And we do divide by the deep water wavelength, uh, 25 meters. The ratio is about 0 0.08, okay? And now we're gonna go back to that curve. So D over, eight, D over L0 is 0 0.08, a little bit tough to read there. Um, 0 0.08 and the axes we wanna be looking at are the ones, or the numbers are the ones in parentheses. So I don't know, somewhere over, over here, uh, 0 0.08, this is 0 0.06 here, this is 1.7, so maybe we're a bit closer to 0 0.06. Um, and we walk our way, let me use a different color here, we walk our way up to the graph and we're gonna walk our way over and you know, you'd have to do uh, some, some uh, use a magnifying glass to figure this out, but let's say that we pick off a value of H over H naught prime of uh, 0 0.93. It's near that minimum that I described earlier, okay? So we'll go back to our notes. Oh, I guess we won't. I guess they were erased. Um, so we have a value of H over H naught prime is equal to 0 0.93. And if you remember, we said our deep water wave height is uh, 1.5 meters for this problem. Deep water wave height. Um, and we said it was 1.5 meters, and from that we get that the wave height and two meter depth is about 1.4 meters. Okay, so you know it's effectively 93% of what it was in the deep water. So, a um, couple of key things to remind to remind yourself of with this is that it's only four waves that are going from deep water into another depth. It could go from deep to deep, uh, but or deep to intermediate or deep to shallow wherever it ends up on this graph. Okay. Um, and the key bit of physics that you can really see very clearly with this Schilling coefficient is that the wave, wave height or wave amplitude will actually decrease when it gets to intermediate depth water. And it's not until it became, becomes a real shallow water wave that you see any sort of dramatic wave growth. Okay.